Okay, people, so we're going to now move on into our new unit, Unit 9. Uh, the topics are combinatorics or counting rules, which uh, correlates to Section 4.4 in our book. We'll start off with the problem. Assume that you wish to order a meal from a local burger stand. They offer a burger meal with five different burger options, four different side orders, and ten different types of drinks. Find the total number of different types of meals that you can order. Well, we did learn a process for answering this question in our previous section, which was to use uh, the tree method. But uh, that would be too cumbersome to use in this type of problem. So what we'll do is we're going to introduce a rule in some books it's called the multiplication rule, in other books it's the fundamental counting rule. And uh, we discuss it below, so let's just read through this rule. It says, in a multiplication rule, fundamental counting rule, in a sequence of n events in which each event has a certain number of options, you can find the total number of possibilities by multiplying the number of options of each event with each other. So event one has option one, that would be a number. Event two has option two, another number, etc. And you just put down the number of options for each event, multiply it out, and that will give us the total number of possibilities. So if we go back to this uh, local burger stand, well, how many options do we have for the burgers? Well, there's five different types, so we'll put five options. I'll use the asterisk for the uh, multiplication. So five times how many different side orders are possible. So the number of options once again is four times the number of options for drinks, 10. Uh, we multiply these numbers to get our answer. And that should be 20 times 10 is 200. So there would be 200 uh, different meals that are possible. So we'll say burger meals. And that's a real basic example. Let's take a look at another example. Um, let's look at example one. It says, how many ways can seven students line up at a drinking fountain? Um, and we'll say to take a drink. So once they line up, they take a drink of some fresh ice cold water. And so how we set this up is um, first, how many students do we have for the first space? How many options do we have? Well, we have seven, right? So there's seven students and we have seven different students that can go in the first location. Obviously, only one will go there, right? Well, one will be assigned to that spot. So for the second spot, how many op options do we have? Well, we don't have seven any longer because one has been assigned to that first spot. So that means we have six possibilities or six options. For the third spot, there's five and then each, for each spot selection, there's going to be, we reduce our total by one. So then we have four, three, two, and finally, for the last spot, there's only going to be one student left, one option. So we go ahead and we just multiply out all these possibilities to get our answer, and that is there would be 5,040 different ways that the students can line up. So we'll just say 5,040 ways that the students can line up for a drink at a uh, fountain. Let's now go ahead and take a look at a problem that might be a little bit more challenging than the previous two. So example two, it says, a zip code plus four is a nine-digit number. 
Let's go down here. It says, recall digits are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it is the Latin form for the word finger. So that's a good mnemonic that you can use whenever you think of digit, think of finger. So there's 10 fingers, 10 digits, 0 through 9. It says the first five digits designate the postal location. And the last four digits designate the delivery route. Compute the total number of zip code plus four numbers if repetitions are allowed. And then it says repeat the problem, but assume that repetitions are not allowed. So you could pause the video to work on this problem. Okay. Now we're returning to the problem. So let's look at part A. So remember, we have, um, it's uh, five digits plus four, and it's saying that repetitions are allowed. So that means since there's 10 digits, each location will have 10 possibilities. So it's 10 times 10, and we're just gonna go ahead and keep multiplying until we get to uh, nine tens, right? Because there's nine spots and there's 10 options because each option is a different digit. So we'll just keep adding. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then finally nine. We multiply all those numbers together and we will end up with the following answer. It will be 9 billion. So there would be 9 billion different um, zip code plus four possibilities for um, Post, it's the zip code plus four postal delivery routes. Okay, so nine billion possibilities. Let's look at part B. Now with part B, repetitions are not allowed. So that basically means we're gonna start with 10 options for all 10 digits. One of those digits will be assigned to that first position. Then nine, then eight, then seven, six, five, four, three, two, and finally one. So we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, we don't go all the way to one because we want nine positions. So just to kind of recap, you have 10 choices for the first spot, nine for the second, eight for the third and so on and you multiply this out and that's going to give us our answer which is 362,880 different zip code plus four numbers. Now, what I would like uh, everyone else to do is to go ahead and work on the other two problems. So you can pause the video and work on these problems and then you'll check your answer. Uh, we will move on now to uh, what are called permutations. Okay, so let's define the word permutation. So a permutation is an arrangement of objects in a specific order. Similar to our previous problem, example one, we had seven students. So we were looking at how many ways we can arrange the seven students to form a line. So anytime you're using the word arrange, think of permutations. It's an arrangement of objects. So we'll start off with a real basic example. We have three letters. How many ways can we arrange the three letters? Well, let's start off by listing off the possibilities. 
So obviously one possibility would be A, B, C. A second possibility would be A, C, B. A third would be B, C, A. A fourth, B, A, C. A fifth, A, C, B. And then finally, actually, let's go back to that one because we already have that permutation. So we need a permutation with C, A, B. And then there's one last uh, permutation, it's C, B, A. So there are six permutations. So there's six different ways of arranging the three letters. But what happens if we have um, five letters, actually six letters, A, B, C, D, E, F. How many ways can we arrange six letters? So pause the video and see if you can come up with that answer. Okay. So let's answer this question. So obviously one thing we don't want to do is to try to list out all the possibilities. That's going to be a very complicated process. But we can use the rule that we just learned, which was our uh, multiplication rule. So let's start off with the first uh, position of the letter. How many possibilities are there? Well, there's six possibilities, right? Because you have six letters. One of those letters is assigned to that position. How many possibilities for the next position? Five. And then just count down four, three, two, and finally one. So the total number of permutations for uh, six letters is 720. So it's a good thing you didn't write out all the um, possibilities. That's a lot of permutations there. Okay, well, we're going to kind of tie up this rule. It turns out that to compute the total number of permutations, we're going to use a mathematical concept um, that's known as a factorial. So a factorial, uh, just imagine we have a whole number, and it's followed by in English what we would call the exclamation mark. But in math, it's known as a factorial. And uh, basically what we do is we start with a number, and we count down all the way back down to 1, from that whole number and multiply all those numbers together, much like we did in this problem here. So this is a so another way we could have written this problem is 6 factorial is 720. So instead of writing down all the numbers from 6 back down to 1, a shorthand notation would be to write 6 factorial, and that is equal to 720. Okay, so our, this is our definition. If n is greater than 0, n factorial is n, count all the way back down to 1, multiply this, these out. n is just a generalization of a number. It could be any number, 10, then it would be 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way back down to 1. In the special case where n is 0, we assign 0 factorial to the value of 1. So, um, Let's just highlight this here. So permutations can be computed using your calculator. So please look for instructions. I've made a couple of videos that uses uh, the calculator to compute these combinatorics. So you can check out those videos. Uh, if they're not posted, they will be coming soon. Um, so now to practice your calculator, go ahead and compute these permutations. Okay. And it turns out uh, that C is a little challenging, so try to see if you can think of it in a clever manner. And then uh, I'll go ahead and post these answers. Um, and uh, you can check your answers. I, I, usually the post is at the bottom of our module. But we'll go ahead and stop here for this video, and uh, we'll continue with the next topic, which discusses uh, 
more permutation rules. 